watching. Let's see. Pulling you guys up on my iPad here. See if anyone's watching. So far, no one has joined. We'll see if anyone joins. But if not, no biggie. How are you guys doing? Talking to no one so far. Well, we'll just hop over to Instagram. Oh, look, there's people. Wow, look at all you guys. How's everyone doing? You guys hanging in there? How's your Saturday going? Yes, Andrew, you guys can ask whatever questions you want. This is time for you guys to just chat with me. I, it's Saturday evening and I was bored and not doing anything. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what I could do is hop online and talk to strangers on the internet about <laughs> chameleons. So here we are. So we'll see if you guys have any questions or maybe you guys have some good jokes. I don't know. That's cool too. I have some cheesy jokes. Um, okay. Let's see. John has a question. Do you want to rip Panther Chameleon if I don't have a drip, drip system? Are three sessions a day good until I get one? So you don't need a dripper. Um, it's just like an extra form of hydration. If you had to pick between a misting system and a dripper, I would definitely pick a misting system. Or just like a spray bottle, something like that, you know? And I would just spray your Chameleon two times a day. And if their urates look good, then like you're golden. You don't need to spray three times. Usually three times is a bit excessive, so just stick with two, John, and I think you'll be, you'll be golden. Also, congrats on getting a new Panther Chameleon. I'm sure everyone who's watching like wants to know. Like you gotta give us the details: name, breeder, locale, like how cute is he, or her? I don't know. But, like you know, give it, give us some details. Let's have a conversation. Okay, Claire asks. Oh, Claire and Lauren. I don't know who's watching. Claire or Lauren? How is Neptune? Um, he is currently hiding. He's been kind of in a weird mood the last few days. He's been really shy and defensive and hiding all day. So, I'm like, that's what chameleons do. You know, they're not like super friendly creatures. And Neptune's definitely my shyest chameleon out of all of them. So, yeah, he's just been chilling in the corner. And he like wraps himself around the branch and just like holds on like this. And those little eyeballs are just like sticking out on either side, you know? So, that's what he does. Let's see, my chameleon is staying at the bottom. What does that mean? Okay, Karma, there's, I would say, three reasons. I feel like this is a good video topic. Three reasons why a chameleon is hanging out at the bottom. One, they're exploring. That's totally normal. They'll go up to the top, they'll go down to the bottom. Maybe they're trying to get away from the heat or the UVB or they're just checking out their enclosure. That's totally normal. Second reason is they could be getting ready to lay eggs if you have a female, in which case you need to provide her a proper laying bin that's probably the second most common. And then the third reason why your chameleon's at the bottom is because they're sick. Um, that's like if they can't climb branches, if they're only able to be at the bottom, it's not like they're choosing and climbing down and climbing back up, like they're stuck at the bottom or their arms are bowed like this. I don't know if you guys have seen pictures on the internet of people's chameleons and their little arms are like this. It like breaks my heart because they've got super bad MBD. Um, but yeah, that's, that, those could be reasons why they're at the bottom. What's your favorite type of chameleon? Um, right now I've been really digging carpet chameleons and Mellor's chameleons, which I don't know if you're familiar, but carpet chameleons are like teeny tiny little squirts and Mellor chameleons are like big guys. So that's kind of funny, they're complete opposites, but they both have spots. And I'm a sucker for spots on animals. Like if I got a dog, it'd definitely be a Dalmatian. And I happen to have a Dalmatian crested gecko. So I'm a sucker for the spots. Um, I've seen a video about saying they don't eat plant matter, but mine does. Okay, so it's not that chameleons don't eat plants. And this is going to be a whole video topic because it's, it's a whole thing in the chameleon community. So chameleons in the wild, this is what happens. They're eating soft-bodied like worms and um, flies and moths and things like that. And then in captivity, we feed them things that have a hard exoskeleton, like roaches and crickets and things like that. But those are not things the chameleon would naturally eat in the wild. It's just what we have available to us in captivity. 
So in order for a wild chameleon to eat what I'm going to call squishy bugs, soft body bugs, they will eat plant matter to kind of give what's called roughage, you know, for the bugs to be digested. We don't have to do that in captivity because of the types of bugs that we offer. So hopefully this is making sense. It, it's in their DNA and their hardware to eat these plants because of the food they normally get. But because they don't get that food, we don't need to offer them like fruits and vegetables in their diet. They're insectivores. They don't eat um, plants in the wild to eat them. They eat them to help them eat the bugs, if that makes sense. I have no idea if that made sense to you guys, but that's my attempt. This is why I haven't made the video yet because I'm still trying to figure out what the best way to word it is. And this is why you should have live plants and not fake plants. Okay, what more questions do you guys have? Where can I get horizontal sticks? And do you recommend getting ones from outside and putting them in your oven? So I actually have a branch. A branch. This is what happens when we have a live video. I have a video on how to sanitize outdoor branches and I totally recommend getting branches from outside. You can just scrub them with soap and water, check out my video. And I have a video on how to attach branches because that's always tricky with a screen enclosure. But that's what, that's what I would do, yeah. Get them from outside. Blueberry Studios is back, everybody. Just shout out to Blueberry Studios because they're commenting on all my videos and they're super, super awesome. So I appreciate you. My chameleon is barely going into his teenage and I feed him seven, eight bugs a day. Is that good? Okay, Shyla. I'm not gonna try and say your last name. When your chameleon, and it sounds like you have a male chameleon, is approaching like eight to nine months, that's a good time to start feeding them every other day and every two to three days to keep them nice and lean and not getting too chubby. I would say seven to eight bugs every day is gonna be a bit much for a chameleon that age. How much plants do you need in the cage? Put enough plants in there to where you don't have to ask, do you have enough? Does that make sense? If you have to be like, should I put more in? Then you probably should. You want tons of plants in there from top to bottom, lots of places for your chameleon to hide, lots of places for your chameleon to climb. Is missing twice a day good, one in the morning and at night three minutes each? That is excellent. That is exactly what I would recommend. Once before lights turn on, once before lights turn off for two to four minutes. So that three minute mark is perfect. Since my Jackson had all 32 babies, can she still have more later on since they hold sperm? Yes, Michelle. They, sh there's a chance, definitely a chance that she will have, is it considered a litter? Could it wouldn't be a clutch, because they're not eggs. Do you, Jackson's chameleon have litters? Do they give birth? Can you have a chameleon litter? Is that a thing? I don't know. I don't know what the technical term is for a group of baby Jackson's chameleon. But to answer your question, yes, she can and probably will have more babies. Okay, question from Andrea. I have a five month old that's recently recovering from MDD. I want to know how much food to feed. What's a good range? I do give silkworms. So a five month old, um, depending if it's male or female, I would say you can still feed them every day, 10 to 15 bucks at the five month mark. And then you want to start cutting them back once they're approaching like, um, for a female, like six to eight months and for a male, like eight to nine months eight months to a year, something like that. Um, five, I don't know what this question says. Okay, ooh, John gave us some information on his chameleon. Okay, his name is Turbo, because he's super fast. Love that, that's adorable. Have you guys seen the movie Turbo, where there's like the little snail that like gets superpowers and goes zoom, like his name's Turbo? No, just me, okay. And then Banja, awesome. How much times do I feed my chameleon? Okay, I've answered that question twice now, so I'm gonna skip that one. Um, we're gonna scroll down. You made me get a chameleon. Oh, that's cool. Hopefully you know how to take care of them correctly. That's the goal. Have you ever had any reptiles other than chameleons? Yes, I have um, a crested gecko. Um, okay, guys, don't ask the same question multiple times. Please, I don't have a moderator in this chat, so it's just gonna clutter the feed. So just, I will get to your question, just ask it once, please, okay. Um, my chameleon is shedding, cool. I have a candle chameleon. I don't know what a candle chameleon is. And if it's not eating for three days, what do you recommend I do? I have a whole video on what to do if your chameleon's not eating. Most common reasons are they're new and still getting adjusted to their new environment. Um, 
they're being picky about the food that they want, they're shedding, they could be close to laying eggs, what else? Um, they're shy eaters and you're hovering and watching them, the food's not moving. There's a bunch of reasons, obviously, why I made a whole video about it, so please check that out and please stop asking the same question. You guys are driving me crazy. Do we use gentle force? Um, so you should never use any kind of force with a chameleon. They're very fragile, it's very easy to break their bones, and you should never force handle your chameleon, even if you're doing it gently. Got my panther at five days old from a website. No, is that healthy? Absolutely not. A five day old chameleon, the minimum, 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 I would recommend like the old youngest, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. The youngest age would be three months old. Anything younger than that, like shame on the breeder for shipping or giving you a chameleon that young. At three months, they're pretty established. They're able to take um, feeders that you can readily buy. If you have a baby, baby hatchling, that's what they're called, hatchlings, then they have to eat like fruit flies and pinhead crickets and no one wants to deal with that. So three months old, they're pretty established. They can handle the temperatures, the UVB, appropriate size feeders and like, do not sell a chameleon less than three months old. And do not buy a chameleon less than three months old. How do I give my chameleon water? Guys, you're asking questions I have videos about. Like I have over 60 YouTube videos. My most popular being one, how do I water chameleon? But um, misting your chameleon is like the number one way to do that or with a fogger if you're into fogging. That's cool too. I'm scared to hold my chameleon. He always hisses at me. Okay, Karma, probably shouldn't hold your chameleon then. Um, what comes after a hiss is a bite. So it's not, people like to think like chameleons are angry, right? And they're like mean or they're like cranky. But really they're just scared. Like think about a chameleon, all right? They've got head, legs, tail, body. What is the chameleon gonna do to like scare off a predator? Say it's like, like a big snake coming at it or something like, the only thing a chameleon can do is make itself look super intimidating puff up, hiss, gape, and ultimately all they can do is bite. But their, te their teeth are small. Like a chameleon can only try and scare you away. That's their only defense mechanism. So if a chameleon is puffing, hissing, giving like eh, like that, that's them telling you like, I'm scared. Like I hope I'm scary enough for you to stop bothering me. So like respect the chameleon and don't try and handle them if they're hissing at you. How did you get your bucket for a plant to hang on the dragon strand cage? I just got mine. The, the dragon strand cage comes with dragon strand ledges. They're a godsend. If you don't have a dragon strand cage, you can still buy the ledges separately, and that's what I use to attach all my branches and plants. Um, question, since I got the pet backdrop, can I just put that around the screen even though, yes, yes, yes. So if you get a background for your cage, you can just put it on the backside of the, the enclosure, and then you can have like a cool background. Hello, I need your help. It's the same question. Please don't blow up my chat <laughs> with the same questions. What is the best way to get your chameleon used to being handled? Give them treat bugs. So superworms, waxworms, hornworms are probably the three most common treat bugs. But if you can associate your, if your chameleon can associate you with treats, like you're giving them a cookie, you're giving them a cupcake, you're giving them a Dairy Queen blizzard, like <laughs> whatever it is you like, then your chameleon's like, ooh, yummy treat. And then they get, less fearful of you, and that's the whole point. A chameleon that is able to be handled is a chameleon that isn't scared of you and trusts you enough to not eat them. That's what it comes down to. So it's not a friendly thing, it's just they're not scared or intimidated by you. So if you give them treats, then they can associate you with a positive experience, and so that is like probably the best way to get a chameleon to start to trust you. Okay, Blueberry says, hello, what's up? My friend Anthony likes chameleons and wondering how he can bang one. I'm gonna assume buy one. Um, I suggest buying from a reputable breeder online. Make sure they're three months old. Make sure they can tell you who the parents are. Do some research on the breeder. There are some good ones and there are some bad ones. And I would suggest going to chameleonforms.com slash sponsors. And that's who sponsors the site, obviously. But on that list are a bunch of breeders and they're all top notch. My friend, oh, let's see. How much would a whole setup cost? Um, depends, you can like make it yourself for probably a couple hundred bucks or you can go big and buy all the high end stuff for like a thousand dollars. So it totally depends. You shop on a budget and go for the high end products, it's up to you. But 
Um, definitely a couple hundred dollars all said and done. Um, can a chameleon become depressed? No, uh, reptiles don't have emotions to my knowledge. So they don't, I don't, to my knowledge, like they don't get depressed. Um, if your chameleon is showing symptoms that could be interpreted as depression, odds are it's probably more sick than anything else. Um, let's see. Hello, I really wanted to know something. It was a shedding, but then stopped. What does it mean? What do I do? It's a veiled chameleon. So a baby chameleon will shed just like, they'll just explode. You like have your chameleon one day and then you go and then they shed and it like takes a couple hours. As your chameleon gets older, it takes them longer to shed and they will shed in pieces. So currently Luna, for example, shed her head, but the rest of her body has not shed. So her head's like bright green and the rest of her body's like this dull green because it hasn't shed yet. So as they get older, they shed in pieces. This is totally normal. Just make sure none of the pieces are constricting. They're like tails or toes that could potentially cut off circulation. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm just reading through these. Do, do, do. Four months old chameleon. Thank you for your channel. You are very welcome. Like I make these get videos to help you guys out, right? Like I just do this for fun. So that like those comments warm my heart. Let's see, thank you so much. You are welcome. How many crickets should I feed my six month old veil chameleon? Um, six months old, probably like 10 to 15 crickets would probably be good for six months. Um, four month old chameleon, he's skinny. I can see his bones. Does that mean I have to feed him more? So it's actually normal to see a chameleon's bones. Um, people will see their ribs and then they'll like freak out. I'm like, oh my gosh, my chameleon's too skinny. That's actually a sign of a healthy chameleon when you can see the outlines of their rib and their spine bone. It's concerning if you can see like their eye bone or their tail bone, then that's usually too skinny. But baby chameleons, they just, they're growing so fast to so just feed them as much as they can eat. Um, let's see, is sink water okay to spray in the chameleon cage? Depends on your tap water. Some cities have super good tap water. Other cities have garbage <laughs> tap water. Um, like this is tap water. I'm drinking it. It's all good. But if you have, to, if you're not sure, like do some research on your city's water quality. Um, you can use things like reverse osmosis water, you can get purified water, you can use a Brita filter, you can use Rip the Safe, like there's tons of ways to treat the water if you happen to live somewhere where the tap water isn't, isn't great. Um, this person has a question. Okay, Victoria, let's see. During the day, temperature and humidity are all good, but, but at night temperature is good, but humidity is a problem. I have a humidifier running at night, but it runs out while we are sleeping. Any ideas? Um, I would suggest um, maybe looking at getting a fogger then um, and then you put that at the top of the enclosure and have the fog fall down and that can help increase your humidity levels. Really just looking for a spike in the evening with humidity. I know the all the care sheets say 70 to 100% humidity at night, but 100% humidity is like pretty unrealistic I think to try and get in your home without like destroying your walls and the paint on your walls. So really you're just looking for that spike in the evening and just we have to do the best that we can, you know, and keeping chameleons in captivity is going to be different than keeping them in the wild. Like that's just the nature of keeping animals in captivity, but we can do our best, the best we can and provide them that spike, look into a fogger, look into a humidifier that has a bigger water reserve and those would be my suggestions. Um, is it normal that my chameleon is really tame and loves to be handled? Um, okay, so Claire and Lauren, you told me that your command's five days old. If your command likes to be handled, um, it, it's probably because they're just stressed out. Um, some commands are super friendly, but I would say chameleon that young, like it could just be a stress thing. Hard to know though, because I, I don't have your chameleon. That's just my two cents on it. Um, yeah, I would say it's not normal, but it's not like unheard of. So it's not the norm. Um... Okay, I use water from the fridge, highlighter, cams, or cas, uh, cas chameleons are both good breeders. Highlighter cams I think is overpriced. That's just my honest opinion. I think they're, they charge 
too much for their commands. They have to answer commands going for $800. I paid $275 for, for Neptune, so I think they're overpriced. The other breeder I haven't heard of, so I can't weigh in on those. Um, how do you do your irrigation system? I don't have an irrigation system. I don't, what is irrigation? Isn't that like a garden thing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that is. What time do you turn your light off and on? My lights go off at 8.30 and on at 8.30. So 12 hours, 12 hours. What kind of command do you recommend? I've seen lots of sources recommend different ones, but I want your suggestion for beginners. Okay, blueberry possum. That's an interesting name. <laughs> um, I have a whole video on the best beginner chameleon, but what it comes down to, and I love anyone who's watching, like give me your opinion, because you know, everyone has different opinions. My suggestion is either a veiled, a male veiled chameleon or a male panther chameleon, three months or older. And then between those two, consider, do you live somewhere that's naturally humid? Then a panther chameleon would be a good option. Do you live somewhere that's naturally dry? then a veiled chameleon would be a good option. If that doesn't really matter and you can create the correct environments for either species, then the next question to ask yourself is which one do you think looks cooler? That's really what it comes down to. Do you like the bright greens and tall cask of the veiled chameleon or do you like the more rainbowy colors and smaller cask of the panther chameleon? And that's just personal preference. Don't pick a chameleon off of price. Don't pick a chameleon off of temperament because if you're picking off price, you shouldn't get a chameleon because the chameleon is the most, like that's the cheapest part of caring for them. And you shouldn't pick off temperament because I know cranky panther commands, I know friendly veiled chameleons, so that doesn't really make a difference. That's just my two cents, but you guys, all 36 of you who are watching, oh geez, uh, <laughs> let me know down below, what would you recommend as a beginner chameleon? And maybe give me like, why? Um, do, 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 when? Do they start getting their colors? My Ambilobi is four months old, has a white stripe across his body. He might be a red body blue bar. If not, when, I, when will I see his color? So Neptune didn't start getting his colors, like really, really getting them until he was closer to seven to eight months old. So you just gotta hang tight. That's the thing with panthers, especially males, is they come out of the egg brown little squirts and it takes like almost a whole year before they get their full colors. But it is worth the wait. I mean, look at Neptune now. He's like a rainbow lizard. But yeah, he took he took a while um, to finally get them. But it's like every time they shed, it's like Christmas morning, right? Because they have new colors. When do male veiled start to change color? Around the same age, I think a little bit younger, probably like five, six months old. Then you'll see their male colors come in. Um, okay, this person talks to me and they're wanting to get back into breeding. I was wondering if it's okay to throw your name out before I allow people to purchase. Yes, you guys are more than welcome to share my YouTube channel. Um, just give credit where credit is due, right? Um, if you just drop them a link to my YouTube channel, that's totally fine. I've once had someone steal my videos in my pictures without giving me credit. That's not cool for anyone to do on the internet, for anyone's content. If you didn't make it yourself, then you need to give credit where credit is due. But if you're just dropping YouTube links, like, fine by me, all good. Do purple lights affect chameleons when it's dark? Um, yes, Karma, to answer your question, chameleons need total darkness to sleep at night. Um, no lights should be on for them. Ecstatic says, hi, hello, how's it going? Sorry, I'm trying to get through these questions. Does death affect chameleons? I'm gonna go with yes. Um, air quality is important. We gotta make sure we're providing nice air quality for them. Okay. What panther locale do you like best? I like Nosy Boraha, Boraha. I never know how to pronounce these. Um, my favorite locale lately has been Umbanjas. Um, I'm a sucker for the purples. I'm not a big fan of the Umbanja pointy nose, um, but I love the purple Umbanjas. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the breeder tree candy, but they've got some super sick um, purple Umbanjas and they did like a tree candy camouflage like crossover and those are beautiful beautiful chameleons. You guys didn't know, um, panther chameleons get their locales based off of where Madagascar they're from. So like Neptune's ancestors are from Ambilobi, Madagascar. So he's considered an Ambilobi panther chameleon. And then Banja is like a part of Madagascar and that's where those chameleons can be found. So that's pretty cool and it determines their colors. Yeah, I think it's fun stuff. Um, I've been thinking about getting a fogger but wasn't sure and I was told to feed my chameleon five crickets in the morning. He's only five months old, but if you just said 15 crickets, 
for a six month old. Yeah, so when your chameleon is that young, you should just feed them as much as they can. They're growing, they need the food, and then once they get older, you can start cutting back. I understand that chameleons can't eat red ants and such. Are there other things in the category of insects that chameleons can't eat? I made a video about this. What not to feed your chameleon? I made a video on what to feed, and then I made a video, made a video on what not to feed your chameleon. The biggest bugs that come to mind, and please watch the video if you want more ideas. Earthworms, you should not feed a chameleon. Ladybugs, you should not feed a chameleon. Fireflies, you should not feed a chameleon. Um, fireflies, I've been told, are toxic for reptiles as well as ladybugs. Earthworms just don't make sense to feed to a chameleon. And butterworms is another one. They're high in fat, and some chameleons have had allergic reactions to eating butterworms due to the radiation that the butterworms go through um, while they're, like, bred in captivity. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. There you go. Okay, someone said male panther, male veiled. Yep. For a beginner, my panther's cage is filled from top to bottom with live plants. Any recommendations on keeping his cage clean? Anytime I feed hormones, box him, his poop is runnier than normal and will get all over. Well, you know, chameleon's poop. It's just what happens. If you don't want to have to worry about chameleon poop, then go fully bioactive, which is when you have like a drainage layer, topsoil, you've got isopods, springtails, which can go in, they're considered like a cleanup crew, and they can go and eat the poop, and then you don't have to worry about it. So if you really, like if the poop bothers you that much, then just go bioactive. And if you have tons of life plants anyways, then like that might be a good option for you. What breeder do you use and do they ship? So I've actually never bought a chameleon from a breeder. I've bought all my chameleons from my local reptile shop. Paula, Luna, and Neptune all came from that same shop, and then Pluto, my crested gecko, I got um, at the Reptile Expo from a breeder there. So, so many people always ask me what breeder I got Neptune from, and I'm like, he's he's local. He's a local guy, you know. Um. Oh, okay. Um, the person who asked about the irrigation thing, they're asking how does the water, how do you make sure the water does not stay in the terrarium? So I have a drainage system. You can kind of see this is like. A shelf thing down here is a bucket and I have holes at the bottom of the enclosure so it goes down the bottom of the enclosure through a tube down in the bucket I show this in more detail in my how to water chameleon chameleon cage tour video so feel free to check that out if you want like full inside scoop of how to do this I will let you know I did not build this bought off Craigslist so <laughs> anytime people ask me how did you build your drainage system I didn't I bought it so and I'm also not handsy and crafty like that to build one. So hopefully you are, but <laughs> that's what I did. Okay. My chameleon won't extend its tongue, and he's also rubbish at hunting. Okay, Erin, so could be a couple of reasons. Um, could be eye issues or tongue issues, both of which are really hard to troubleshoot. There could be a multitude of reasons. I would definitely make sure that you're using the correct supplements, though. That seems to be the most common reason. Um for eye and tongue issues, or commands will sometimes strain the tongue muscle, like it'll get stuck on a bug and then like strain it um, that way, so that could be why. Okay, let's see, Cheyenne has a question. I really like your videos, it's very informative. I have three panther commands, two veil commands, and about 50 eggs. Oh, I guess that wasn't a question, just more of a, a statement. Well, congratulations on being a chameleon grandma. I want to upgrade his cage. What size cage should I get if they have a two month old veiled chameleon? So I would recommend a 24 inches long by 24 inches deep by 48 inch tall enclosure. That's the ideal minimum size for a chameleon. Do you think a bioactive enclosure is better for a chameleon or flat bottom should do? I think both are great options, totally great options. Um, it's just personal preference. If you like the look of the bioactive or do you like the look of the bare bottom, I personally have bare bottoms um, on all my chameleon enclosures and just have potted plants at the bottom um, because the humidity in my apartment is already high. The humidity in the enclosures is where it needs to be. And if I had all that soil retaining that moisture, then my humidity levels would be too high. Personally, for my species, for my environment. So it doesn't make sense for me. But you could have a complete opposite problem and maybe you live somewhere where it's too dry and that would be a good option so it's just up to you totally up to you i think one day i will do a bioactive enclosure it just doesn't make sense right now for the species i keep which is better for humidity 
a mister or a fogger? <coughs> I would say a mister is better for humidity and a fogger is better for hydration. What type of trees do you suggest for chameleons? Um, umbrella trees are really popular. Uh, money trees are popular. I have a Hawaiian tea plant. I don't think it's technically a tree, but that's a good one. Yeah, I would say umbrella tree is probably the most popular though. Roman says, hi, what's up? Would you recommend putting a chameleon enclosure in a bedroom or where in a house? Um, depends what you do in your bedroom. Like if you're in there all the time and there's tons of foot traffic, then probably not. The biggest things to consider, you want a part of the house that has low traffic, where there's not a lot of people walking by, that pets and small children can't easily access your chameleon, and where it can be dark at night. So my chameleons are in my living room, as you can see here. So I will just like watch TV and that doesn't bother them, but if I had an overhead light, that wakes them up, you know? So take that into consideration, but yeah, that's what I would suggest. Carl says, hi, what's up? Dawn has something, question maybe? So previously you suggested giving treats to handle. How do, my question is, how do I initiate getting her in my hand without using force? She is definitely familiar with me and curious. Okay, so let's say your chameleon is now interested in treat bugs and will take them from a cup, you know, or something along those lines. So the way you get them onto you by their choice and not by force is you stick your arm out your chameleon's over here, right? Pretend they're here. You've got the treat worm, the wax worm or whatever, and you hold it here, and your chameleon will start to stick their tongue out, right? <laughs> that was kind of funny. Stick their tongue out to try and get it, and you can see, and they're like, ooh, I'm interested, and then you just pull the worm a little further, and a little further, and a little further, and you know, don't try and put it to your elbow the first time. Like, give it to them here, where they're still on the branch, and they can reach it and then give it to them here where they have to reach a little further, eventually your chameleon's tongue won't reach to get the bug. So then they'll have to climb onto you to get to the bug. Does that make sense? Who asked this question? Dawn. Okay, give me like a thumbs up, Dawn, if that made sense or not. But you, you see what I'm saying? You could like just coax them out onto your arm with the treat. Danny says, hi, hello. How often do I clean the cage? I clean my cages like once a week, and by clean the cage, I just like clean the bottom. Who is moving? Oh, we've got moths in here. I um hatched some wax, wax moths, and they're nocturnal, so I can hear them flying around. What was the question? Oh, cleaning the cage. Yes, um, how often do I clean? Uh, yeah, as needed. When I see poop, I pick it up. When I see a dead leaf, I pick it up. I don't ever deep clean my cage. This is something people talk about all the time. Because they're like, how do I handle my chameleon to clean the cage? I'm like, you shouldn't have to handle your chameleon to clean the cage. Just like work around your chameleon. There's no reason for you to like have to pull everything out and like deep clean it unless your chameleon got parasites or something, which is rare. Like it doesn't happen to most people. So just clean as needed. There's no reason to like deep clean the whole thing. Okay, where can I buy a panther chameleon? If you go to chameleonforms.com slash sponsors, check them out. Um, Camouflage Creation should be one of the first names that pops up. That's who I would personally buy a panther chameleon from if I was gonna buy another one. Thank you, so helpful. I've been watching all your videos over and over again just to make sure I'm giving my vlog the best life. Oh, you're very welcome, Victoria. Okay, let's see. Carl says, I'm looking for a chameleon from Florida. FL Cams, yeah, FL Cams has good um, veiled commands, I believe. Purple Blueberry says, I love your channel, thank you. Once, what can I do with a hornworm once it turns into a beetle? Well, that's a funny question because hornworms can't turn into beetles. So, hornworms turn into moths. So I don't know what, you're, what bug you're asking about. Should I get a more than five month old chameleon? That's fine. Um, I, like, you can get five months old, I think that's great. I'm getting a chameleon tomorrow, any advice? Um, oh, this is a good question. Okay, I'm gonna open this up. Like, you guys are always welcome to answer people's questions in the chat, like, don't leave it all to me. But I'll open it up, like, if you guys have any advice for Jenna, let them know down below some advice you have. Okay, so things you can expect when you first get your chameleon. I, I mean, whether you're picking them up or shipping them, they're gonna be terrified in the box <coughs> excuse me and so it's common for them to hide from you it's common for them to not 
eat the first few days, so if they don't eat right away, or maybe they eat the first day, but then like they're not, not day three or four, like don't freak out, they're getting adjusted to their new home. Make sure you give the enclosure a good spray as soon as they get home, especially if they were shipped, so they have the opportunity to drink. If you don't see your chameleon drink, don't freak out. Chameleons are shy drinkers, so you need to pay attention to their poop, to their urates, the urate being like what's supposed to be the creamy, orangey part of their poop. If they don't have great poops the first couple of times, don't freak out. This could be the result of like, you know, being shipped or from the breeder, whatever. Give them a few opportunities to get some good poops going. I would suggest getting a fecal test done to make sure they don't have any parasites. It's normal for them to hide from you. It's normal for them to be dark the first few days. If it's a baby, they'll probably try to climb the screen. Make sure your temps aren't too hot. Um, let's see, make sure you're gut loading your bugs tonight. So then they'll be gut loaded for tomorrow morning. What else? Uh, did you guys put anything down here? You guys, you guys have to like help, help Jenna out. What advice do you have for someone who's bringing a chameleon home tomorrow? I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure some of you watching have chameleons. What, what would you recommend? We gotta help each other out. Okay. That's anyways, I feel like that's like some good things. I have a ficus tree. Oh yes, that's a popular one. Ficus tree. Is a live rubber tree okay for a chameleon? I don't know what a rubber tree is, so I can't say. <laughs> Which plants would you recommend for a veiled chameleon? <coughs> Sorry, all this talking is like killing my throat. Um, my number one plant recommendation for a chameleon is a pothos plant. And those I think are great to put towards the top of your enclosure so then the vines can hang down. They do well with the heat and the UVB light. Um, just make sure you're giving them maybe a little extra water than just misting because if you mist them, then just the top of their soil gets wet and it doesn't really penetrate the rest and the pothos do really great with lots of water. So what you can do is position your dripper right over your pothos, which is great because then it'll drip onto the leaves, but then also give the pothos lots of water. So I think that's my like number one plant recommendation. And then before you ask, you can get it at places like Home Depot and Lowe's. Just know with colder weather, it's not really prime time to be buying plants. Um, spring is like game time for any chameleon keeper. Like when spring hits, everyone's like going to Home Depot and Lowe's and just like whoop, scooping up all the plants. Okay, Don says, total sense, you rock. Okay, awesome Don, glad that made sense. Good luck with handling your chameleon. Where should I get a chameleon? I answered that like two minutes ago. Thank you for making this channel. You seem really bubbly and nice. You have a great info view. Thank you, and you guys are so welcome. Like, I was feeling pretty lonely. Um, I live by myself, and so it's it can get hard sometimes, you know, especially with the world being the way it is and lots of places being shut down and people working from home and people not traveling for the holidays and, and things like that. And, you know, I was just feeling like alone and a little, not a little, I mean, yeah, a little sad. Like I'm generally a positive person, but, um, so I don't know. And I, I love chameleons and I love helping people. And that's why I think this YouTube channel has been super awesome because it's an opportunity for me to share my passion and knowledge of chameleons with you guys and I'm learning alongside with you guys every time you're asking me questions if I don't know the answer like I try my best to go and find out the answer point you in the direction of a resource and your messages of like my chameleon is alive because of you or if I can catch that someone has a female instead of a male and so like she gets to live because of that or seeing like your baby pictures of like bringing your chameleons home like that's that's super awesome and you know like I already feel warm and fuzzy inside you know like if you had a cup that was like your happiness like my happy cup is full you know and it's kind of weird because this is a one-sided conversation because I'm the only one talking but it's cool to like chat with you guys and know that you guys like want to spend a little bit of your time chatting with me about chameleons and and whatnot but anyways not to get all sappy on you guys just yeah there you go okay <clears throat> I've had my veil for about a year now. He stayed the same size for the past couple months. He has a five foot by three foot by three foot and seems very happy or healthy. That's awesome. Um, I would say once your man hits a year old, you know, they don't really grow much more. They kind of just fill out a bit. How do you keep the humidity without killing the plants? 
You keep plants that do well in high humidity. That's the trick. Strategically pick your plants that do well with lots of water and lots of humidity. How many months is a juvenile? I would say four to five, four, yeah, four months to like seven months, I would put in like the juvenile category. Thank you for all the advice on your chats and videos. You are very welcome, Michelle. So welcome. Um, okay, let's see. If there was something wrong with your chameleon and you needed to take it to the vet, how would you do that? Um, try and get them onto a stick if you can't handle them and then put them into a box. I have a like mini dog carrier thing and I just stick this stick in there and then zip around it and then I take a blanket and put it over that. And that's how I will transport my chameleons to the vet. Oh, most people would just like throw them in a cardboard box. Not throw them. Gently place them into a cardboard box. How would you move to a different house with your chameleon? Um, exactly that. I would just put them into their little containers, transport them, move their enclosures. It's probably one of the first things that I got set up for them. If and when I move, I will definitely film that for you guys um, so you can kind of see what the process looks like. I've never had to move with any of my reptiles, so it would be a first for me. Um, I may or may not like one day move states, you know, and like go cross country, something like that, right? That would be a fun vlog, right? <laughs> Have my commands in my car. Um, let's see. Do not feel bad. I am your friend. Oh, thanks, Carl. I appreciate you guys. When I moved, I got a branch and gently put him in a small screen enclosure. Yep, that's great. Um, also, how big do veils get? Um, I don't own a veiled, so I can't speak from personal experience, but commands can vary in size. Um, Neptune is like 140 grams. Luna was 156 this week. Apollo was 187, something like that. So that's how big like those guys are. And I think veils are like in between a Luna and Apollo. Probably like 160 grams, something like that. But if like on my arm, depending, like every command is going to be different, but I would say like Body would probably be like, like that size, somewhere in there, Yeet. and then you've got tail. Pew. That's probably like how big a male veil would be, and then they've got their cast, so it gives some height for that. I don't know if that gives you <laughs> an approximation, but that's about how big. Two last questions. Okay. When am I gonna know if my veil is a male or female? So you can sex a veiled chameleon straight out of the egg. Um, who's this, Don? Dawn, I have a video on how to sex a veiled chameleon. Um, the best way to tell is from their back feet. If it's completely smooth, then as a female, if there's a little bump, what's called a tarsal spur, that's a male. But check out the video, it goes into detail on all that. Is it necessary to take your chameleon to the vet if they eat, shed, and seem happy? Oh, did this freeze? I can't tell. It's frozen on my screen, is it frozen on? Your guys' screen? Mm, hold on. Did my phone die? Oh, there you go. Okay, my phone is at 20% battery, so there you go. Is it working now? Should be working. Okay, yeah, my phone's at 20%, so we're gonna have to wrap this up soon because it's dying. <laughs> so that's why it froze for a second. Okay. Um, what was your other question, Don? Is it necessary to take your commute if they eat, shed, and seem happy? Um, no, everyone has different stances on this. I suggest you get your fecal test done, and most vets won't do a fecal test without doing, like, a physical examination to, like, just make sure they visually look good. I only take my chameleons in if there's a problem with them, um, but that's just me. Other people take them in once a year. How do you hang plants in the enclosure? I use dragon strand ledges. Why is my female bright colors during the day? Does that mean she's happy? Chameleons change for a variety of reasons. Females in particular will change colors because they're receptive, because they're pregnant slash gravid. That's a technical term. Um, or they're just like, they're happy colors or they're just absorbing heat or they're defensive. Like you just kind of have to learn chameleon body language with time. You can understand. Okay. I'm just trying to finish these questions before my phone dies. 
Uh, mine only has a pothos until I upgrade in a couple weeks. You really want a chameleon? Well, Georgia, you want a chameleon? Keep doing your research. You can get one one day. Are chameleons sold at pet stores seasonal or all year round? When would be a good time to get a chameleon? I would not recommend getting a chameleon from a pet store. Um, I would instead recommend getting from a reputable breeder. And because there are so many breeders of uh, panther chameleons and veil chameleons, you can buy them all year long. That's great. It's hard to find a reputable breeder for a Jackson chameleon. But yeah, you can buy a chameleon year round. I just wouldn't go from a pet store. Okay. Um, why do exotic pets cost so much at the vet? Because they're, they're a specialty. Think of the population of people who own cats and dogs and the population of people who own exotics. It's a smaller amount of people, so there's not as many vets. Um, plus, it's just more difficult to, to treat them because I think there's just not as much information about it. But I'm also not a vet, nor do I work in the animal medicine business. <laughs> so, Okay, it's been 44 minutes. Oh yeah, we gotta, we gotta wrap this up soon. Okay, how can you help your chameleon drink water slash get hydrated? Misting them, foggers are like drippers. Those are your top three. I would research all three of them, pros and cons for all of them and see which one is makes the most sense for your environment and your chameleon. I will totally check out your video. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. You were the inspiration behind our new family edition. Oh, that's so sweet. You're very welcome, Don. Happy to help. Um, let's see. I have 32 Jacksons. Yeah, Michelle. You and your growing clan of chameleons with all your babies. I hope they're doing well. Sounds like they are. How many Reptosafe packs do you need in one day? I don't use Reptosafe, so I can't say if someone else knows the answer. Feel free to drop it in there. It's okay that my baby Veiled has a semi-small cage until she is a couple months older. Chameleons grow very fast. I would upgrade her ASAP. Um, also, females need a lane bin, so you'll want to make sure you have a space in the bottom for that. So I'd get a 24 wide by 24 inch. In there also just check out the forums and just search the breeder that you're looking for and see if there are threads already some people have had really 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 bad experiences from very bad breeders and as a result have dead chameleons just because they got shipped a sick chameleon and they weren't able to get a refund not to mention you're dealing with the loss of the chameleon like buying from a reputable breeder is a game changer don't just like willy-nilly find someone off craigslist or someone that's local to you. you. You can ship a chameleon overnight from a reputable breeder, and that's gonna be way better than driving the 20 minutes down the street for someone who like accidentally bred built chameleons, you know? Okay, I'm frozen again, probably because my phone is at 10%. Okay guys, um, yeah, my phone's about to die, so, eh, sorry. Okay, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for future videos. Feel free to DM me or follow me on Instagram at Neptune the Chameleon. I also have a TikTok account where I post videos over there so you can follow me on TikTok. And thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah. I don't think anyone else has anything else to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are, and I'll see you guys in the next video, next live stream. Bye, guys.